Hi guys, um, in this video I'm going to be going over some questions from the worksheet for chapters 4 and 5 in the homework packet. Um, I'm going to go over question 9 which has several parts to it. So this question has um, two samples here um, with some x values in it and we're just going to answer some questions about these samples. So our first question here is asking which one of these samples has more variability just by glancing at it. So I'm going to say that sample B has more variability just by glancing at it. And the reason I'm saying that is because sample A, like all these numbers are pretty, like pretty close together, right? There's no craziness going on, no random outlying, it's like they're all pretty, pretty close to each other. But if we glance at this one here, we notice that that is not the case with sample B. Um, it's kind of all over the place. We've got 1, 5, 13, 7, like those numbers just aren't close together, right? So that's why V, or I'm sorry, that's why V, that's why B has more variability. Um, then sample A, just at a glance. Um, the second question here asks what the mode is for sample A. So remember that mode is um, just the response that occurs the most often. So in our set here, for sample A, um, the only response that occurs more than once is 9. So that is our mode. Nine C asks, what is the mean for sample B? And remember that the way we find the mean is the sum of your x values divided by the number of responses in the sample. So uh, another way to say that is add them all up and divide by 6 because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 responses in our um, sample here. Yep. So um, I'm going to do, let me find my calculator here. I know I lost it. I'm going to add up all of the responses here for sample B and then divide by 6. So 13 plus 5 plus 9 plus 1 plus 17 plus 9 is 54 divided by N, which is 6 because there were 6 responses, and that equals 9. So the mean for B is 9. Uh, you might also hear the mean of the average. Um, 9D asks what the range is for sample A. We find the range by taking the largest number in the sample minus the smallest number in the sample. So it looks like our largest number in this sample is 12. Our smallest is 7, 12 minus 7 is 5, so our range for sample A is 5. 9E here asks, what is the median for sample B? So the first thing we need to do for that is we need to um, put these in order from least to greatest. So that's going to be... Let's see here, one, I wonder if I can do continuous. I don't think I can, that's okay. So um, one, five, uh, nine, 13, 17, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, oh, I must have skipped one. Oh, two nines. Sorry about that. Sorry, guys, uh, my screen recording stopped there for a minute. Um, 
but what we were doing is finding the median, and I had just put the uh, sample B, I just put it in order from the least to greatest. So um, there's kind of two ways to find the median. There is one way that I learned actually in this stats class, and there's another way that I learned in elementary school, so I'll go ahead and show you guys both ways. But um, this first way here that I learned in, through this stats class is probably going to be the uh, the best way, but you can maybe use the other way that I show you too to like double check yourself. So um, the, this method here is we're going to do n plus 1 divided by 2. And our answer for that is going to be um, the location of the median in our sample here. So n plus 1, well, we already decided that n was 6, since that's how many responses there were in our, uh, I'm just going to do this so it doesn't look like n plus 1 half. Um, that's how many responses there were in our sample. So we're going to do 6 plus 1 divided by 2. 7 divided by 2 is 3.5. So I am going to count, you know, 1, 2, 3, 3 and a half. This right here is the location of my median. So what is the number directly in between 9 and 9? Well, it's 9. So uh, the median for sample B is 9, um, but how I mentioned there was a way that I learned in elementary school, basically they said then um, to just cross off a number on each side until you get to the middle. So, you know, for example, I'm going to cross this, 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 and then I end up with two here since there's an even amount. Um, and then I would just find the average between these two, which again, the average between 9 and 9 is still 9. Um, so you can kind of double check yourself that way, maybe. Our next question here is asking for the standard deviation of sample A. So I am just going to copy these and put them down here on the second page so that uh, I don't have to keep scrolling back up. Okay, so standard deviation. Um, for this, I am going to look over at my formula sheet. Well, let's do this instead, just so we have room. Okay, so standard deviation. This is for a sample. Remember, they told us that it was a sample, not a population. So, um, our standard deviation for a, where did it go? Oh, okay, here it is. Our standard deviation for a sample is the square root of the variance. So the first thing we're going to have to do is find the variance, um, which is the sum of squares divided by n minus 1. And we don't know the sum of squares, so what we're going to have to do even before that is we're going to have to find the sum of squares. So um, I guess the, the easiest way for me to know which formula to use was to, you know, find whatever it's labeled here. Like if you're asked to find a standard deviation, it's like, okay, standard deviation formula. I know it's for a sample. So I'm going to do this. But then I notice that, hey, this here is asking for s squared. Like, but the heck, I don't have s squared. So then, okay, I'm going to search for my formula that gives me s squared. Perfect, I found it. But then, uh-oh, I don't have the sum of squares. So then I'm going to find the um, formula here that will give me the sum of squares. So that's these two here. I'm going to use this one today. Um, and here it's just like x values, which woohoo, I have those, so no issue there. 
So um, I'm just going to write that formula. Sum of squares equals equals the sum of x minus the mean squared. So we're looking at sample A here. So the first thing I'm going to do, which x bar just means the mean, by the way, the mean for that sample. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is find the mean for sample A, which again, we said that the mean equals the sum of x over n. Find my calculator again here. So I'm going to do 7 plus 9 plus 10 plus 8 plus 9 plus 12. That gives me 55 divided by 6 is 9.17. And then I'm going to do that again real quick to make sure uh, my numbers are right. So 7 plus 9 plus 10, oops, 7 plus 9 plus 10 plus 8 plus 9 plus 12. Yep, 55. And again, divided by 6 is 9.17. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to move this down so we have even more room to work. So um, now I am going to do this part here. So for each x value, I am going to first subtract the mean from it. So again, we agreed our mean was 9.17. So I'm going to do 7 minus 9.17 squared plus 9 minus 9.17 squared plus 10 minus 9.17 squared plus 8 minus 9.17 squared plus 9 minus 9.17 squared plus 12 minus 9.17 squared. So if you're confused about where I got that, um, what I did is, so first we can just talk about what these symbols mean in case you don't remember. So this is sigma and it means add it all up. Um, so we're going to add up all this stuff. So it's going to be like a series of um, numbers to add up, right? So this is just our x value, which is each one of these in our sample is the x value. And then this is, like we said, the average for the sample, which we found is 9.17. So we are just going to find that and square it. So um, I did, I got this 7 from here. And then, like I said, we got that from the mean. So 9, that's where I got that 9 from. I got the 10 from here, the 8 from here. Sorry. Yeah, this 9 from here. I did my parenthesis wrong there. I don't know what happened there. Um, and the, the 12 from here. So I am just going to plug these into my calculator and see what I get. So 7 minus 9.17 is negative 2.17 squared is 
positive 4.71. Oops. Plus 9 minus 9.7 is negative 1.7 squared. So 9 minus 9.17 is negative 1 point, or negative 0.17. I think I said 1.7, um, but I meant 0.17. So that is positive 0 0.03 plus 10 minus 9.17 is 0.83 squared is... 0.69 plus 8 minus 9.17 is negative 1.17 squared is 1.37 plus um, 9 minus 9.17 we said was 0.17 squared which was 0 0.03 and then 12 minus 9.17 is 2.83 squared is 8.01. So now I'm going to add up each of these. Um, I'm going to do 4.71 plus 0 0.03 plus 0 0.69 plus 1.37 plus 0 0.03 plus 8.01 so that is 14.84 so that is our sum of squares is 14.84 now I'm going to go ahead and erase all this work here which if you're on a test you know, leave your work so that the um, professor can follow along with with what you did. That's important to always remember. Professors like when you leave your work there for them to read. But for the sake of the video, I'm going to erase this so that we can have more room to work out the rest of the problem. Um, so that is our sum of squares. But like we said, that's not what we're looking for is our end result. As our end result, we're looking for the standard deviation. So um, we needed our sum of squares in order to find the variance, which is sum of squares over n minus 1. So variance equals sum of squares over n minus 1. Um, our sum of squares, we said, was... 14.84, our n we said was 6, because that was the number in our sample, so 6 minus 1, so 14.84 over 5, which is 2.97, and then again, this still isn't what we're looking for as our final result, what we're looking for as our final result is the standard deviation. And right now we just have the variance. So going back over to my formula sheet one last time, and we see that the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So our variance was 2.97. So I am just gonna find the square root of 2.97 which is about 1.72. So for 9F, our um, standard deviation for sample A is that 1.72. And if, I, if you notice me like slipping up and saying, something wrong just try to bear with me it's 5 a.m. but um what I'm writing is right so like I said earlier I think I said 1.7 instead of points um 17 so uh but yeah I'm, I think I'm writing it down right so that's the important part 
Um, so now we've got to find the variance for sample B. I'm going to move this down again just so we have plenty of room to work. Maybe I'll try. My goodness, what's happening here? Sorry, guys, I'm trying my best. <laughs> no. Please cooperate. There we go. Perfect. So, um, remember that we just found variance for this question up here. Um, the variance was this part, right? So, we're going to do the same thing except for sample B. So, um, the first thing we've got to do is find the average of sample B. So, um, let's do this first just so you can understand my thought process. So, we know that eventually what we need is this here. So, we need sum of square or variance, which is sum of squares divided by n minus 1. In order to do this, we need sum of squares, which we don't have. So we're going to go over and find the formula for sum of squares, which is this here, sigma x minus x bar squared. And um, we're going to need x bar for that, which we don't have yet. So x bar equals the sum of x over n. Alrighty, so first thing we're finding is that um, x bar, so the sum of x over n, um, our n we said was 6 since there's 6 responses in the sample, and I'm just going to add up each of the numbers in sample b and divide by 6. So 13 plus 5 plus 9 plus 1, plus 17, plus 9 is 54, divided by 6 is 9. So our x bar is 9, so and now we're going to plug that into this formula here. I'm just going to move this down a little bit so we have more room to work. So we're going to do the same thing with this one that we did up top. Um, so we're going to do 13 minus 9 squared. Again, I got that from here. And then the 9 I got from the x bar here. Um, 13 minus 9 squared plus 5 minus 9. I'm getting that 5 from right here. Um, plus 9 minus 9 squared, getting that from right here. Again, still using the same average there. 1 minus 9, 17 minus 9, and then 9 minus 9. I'm going to use a different color just so we can kind of separate what's going on here. So I'm going to do 13 minus 9 first, which is 4. 4 squared is 16. So I'm going to do 16 plus 5 minus 9 is negative 4 squared is 16 plus 9 minus 9 is 0. 0 squared is 0. 1 minus 9 is negative 8. Negative 8 squared is 64, right? 8 times 8 is 64. Am I right there? Like I said, 5 in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> um, 17 minus 9 is 8. So another... Um, wait, is that what I just did? No, I didn't want to say. 
So another 64 plus 0. So I'm just going to add that all up. 16 plus 16 plus 0 plus 64 plus 64 plus 0 is 160. So our sum of squares is 160. So now I'm going to plug that into our variance formula up here. So sum of squares, or I'm sorry, variance equals sum of squares, which we found was 160 over n minus 1, which we know is 6 minus 1, since 6 was the number in our sample. So variance equals 160 over 5, and then 160 divided by 5 is 32. So our variance is 32, um, and our answer for 9G is 32. So I'm just going to go through and go ahead and highlight our answers for each one of these, uh, just in case you need to go back and see a summary before we close out. And my video stopped again, guys. This this is, clip is going to be messy. I'm sorry. Um, but basically, I was just going to go over the answer for each one of the questions so uh, that you could look over it and make sure you know each one to check along with your work. So for 9A, we said the answer was B. For 9B, we said the answer was 9. For 9C, we said the answer was 9. For 9D, we said the answer was 5. For 9E, we said the answer was 9. For 9F, we said the answer was 1.72. And then for 9G, we said the answer was 32. So I hope this is helpful for you guys. Uh, thanks for tuning in.